Thanks to the supporters of channel member Kenny Gray. Oh, everything's coming together, boys and girls. We're in incredible form in the league. Today, we play against our closest rivals and hopefully secure ourselves a, a spot atop the division. I've got my little part-time job teaching people how to speak English. I think the time has come. We're going house hunting. And as you know by now, in order to go house hunting, there's only one place we go to find out how much we can borrow. The good old Halifax mortgage calculator. Other mortgage calculators are available. And we might need them because based on the salary that I'm earning from my uh, English as a foreign language teaching job, we don't think that we can lend to you right now. Looks like I'm going to be carrying on sleeping in a tent at the training ground for the time being. Hello and welcome to part three of the Tour de France. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have a top of the table clash against what appears to be the only other good team in the division, Vinul, who are actually top of the league at the moment because they've played one more game than we have. And we have a cup game testing ourselves against opposition from a higher division for the first time. Football club Mont-Louis uh, from the National Three in the Centre Val de Loire. Um, so one division higher. If we get promoted this year, this is the league we end up in. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how we face off against a team from a higher league, a semi-professional team. But first up, we have our top of the table clash. Since you were last with me, we have continued winning lots of football matches. But it is also worth noting that Vinul also, after drawing early on, have continued winning football matches as well. In a similar style to what we're doing it. They are smashing everybody they play just like we are. I think we are comfortably the two best teams in the division, and it is going to be interesting to see what happens when we face off in this match. Since the last time you were with me, we still haven't lost any more players, which is which is nice. And just the one new player in, Tarek Dumas, who is a defensive midfielder um, who has joined us on a free transfer uh, from Vincent Noir. Um, he signed last week, three-star current ability, four-and-a-half-star potential ability. You will see him make his debut today as we bring in a player to uh, add a little bit more crunch to our central midfield with his 15 tackling. Bearing in mind, we're in tier six in France, 15 tackling. That man should not be missing a tackle. Um, 16 work rate, 14 aggression. He is go He's just going to tear up every opponent in that central midfield, and that's what we're going to see from him today. As a ball-winning midfielder, he'll probably pick up a few red cards during his time at the club as well. But our team for the game against Vinul, uh, we have Goda in goal, a back four of Dennis, Tyson, Kamara, and Amimi. Natambani. Uh, Brian on the left-hand side of the midfield. Peron, Dumas, and Wimba. And then Denau and Buzrara up front. This guy is still rattling in the goals, as you can see. 12 goals in five appearances and an 8.74 for the man with the widest jaw in football. I think he's probably scoring most of his... I mean, he just looks like... He, he just looks like that fella playing darts down the pub, doesn't he? He's just... I mean, he looks like he should be wearing a Hawaiian shirt with that face. Big Fat Dennis, and he is scoring... I mean, Big Fat Dennis. Big Fat Dennis is scoring goals for fun... And uh, we love him. Big Fat Dennis, what a man. He's only five foot ten. I'm four inches taller than him. I'm calling him Big Fat Dennis. Alf, Alf, I mean, he's only 12. Oh, to be 12 stone. I'm twice this man's weight and I'm calling him Big Fat Dennis. He deserves it. He's a sportsman. I'm not. I'm a foreign language teacher, apparently, who can't get a mortgage and is living in a tent. So I'll call him whatever I want to call him. Right, Dumas gets a new squad number. We send the boys out there. And uh, let's let's go and uh, let's go and show just how good we are against the only other team that are expected to put up any kind of fight against us this year. Certainly, based on how the season is working out so far, they're the only other team thumping teams. They're the only team above us at the moment. I think this is going to be our biggest test of the season away from home against this lot. We talked last episode about maybe getting a lot of matches under our belts. And uh, before, rather than just showing you me winning 5-0 week in, week out, let's get some games played. But it, when it became clear that this was going to be our rivals, at least early on in the season, this is the other team that are going, doing quite well. 
It became clear that I had to show you this match. But if we thump this lot as well, then, you know, we really will just go through to the end of the season. But if they put up a little bit of a fight, then you start to wonder, well, are some of these other teams who are near to us going to put up a fight as well? Maybe there's a bunch of rubbish teams in this league and we've played three or four of them. And then there's maybe some good teams as well. And it might not be as plain sailing as I thought it was going to be. Look how deep Big Fat Dennis is coming there. Lovely stuff from him. Amimi plays it back to Dumas. And now Mwimba and Amimi. Cross comes in looking for Salah Buzrara. And he is there for his ninth goal of the season. He's got a little bit under the radar because Big Fat Dennis is alongside him scoring all the goals. Um, but he's uh, he's got his ninth in... I think that's his sixth appearance. I think they've both played every game. Um, but for him to be on nine goals already as well shows just how well these two are doing as a strike partnership and crucially puts us ahead against our closest rivals. And Antoine Perron is there to grab our second. And I mean, I know this is only our sixth game of the season, but I'm declaring us champions here and now if we win this match as comfortably as it looks like we might win it. Um, they've not had a shot. They've had one shot and they missed. We have we have looked as good against this slot as we've looked against anybody. And this the really scary thing for the rest of the division is against everybody else they've played, they've looked as good as us. That's how much of a level above everyone else in this league we are. Um, so I think we'll we'll very much be focusing on the cup for the rest of the season. And um, I'll obviously check in and show you us winning the league. But like I say, I'm not going to show you uh, four or five episodes of us just absolutely rattling goals past teams because as much fun as it is as a montage, um, I don't want I don't want anyone to get the impression that this save is going to be too easy because I think once we start to move up the leagues a little bit, never mind, Siri, wasn't for you. As soon as we start moving up the leagues a little bit, I think anyone who's played the game before, which I assume is most of you, will be uh, will be pretty clear on the fact that this is going to be anything but easy, especially with the uh, the focus on youth players, the focus on French players and the restriction of not doing any silly finance shenanigans. We actually have to care about the club. I've always said in the past, I'm only the first team manager. I don't need to care about the finances. Well, for once, I'm caring about it all. This club is very close to my heart, and I want us to succeed on and off the pitch so that we don't end up being thrown back down the league through financial mismanagement again. Big Fat Dennis is there with his 14th goal of the season, he takes off his tour shirt, bearing his Hawaiian shirt, and uh, he is having a lovely old time. 3-0 to tour, and I am now becoming increasingly intrigued about how we're going to get on against that team from the division above that we're going to be playing in the second half of the episode because I don't, I, I have no, I've never played in the French lower leagues before. I have no concept of where the, where the improvements come in. I know if I was in England, in the English pyramid system i suspect there wouldn't be much of a difference between tier five and tier six is there in france no idea we're going to learn that in a few minutes um right let's uh let's make our usual set of substitutions we can make five so it's quite nice being able to just make a whole bunch of changes keep everybody nice and fit and healthy give big fat dennis a rest he, he, he's got to get down the pub for his for his darts they've got a player called bath in their team what a name. I want Bath. Um I I, I was I was I was gonna, I'm trying to stop myself saying I'm baffled because I can see the word Bath. I can't stop myself from saying it. Normally I can control myself, but these French names are gonna be the end of me. This is how I get cancelled, isn't it? All these French names. Lefeuve is in here, plays it across to Buchiba, and that's a sixth goal of the season for our reserve striker who is also scoring a few goals. I tell you what, I genuinely thought this game was going to be a little bit harder than it has been. We've not stuck six past them, but we're falling up after 88 minutes. We're doing all right. I mean, we've got no player anywhere near our half. We just camped out in their half, and we have been absolutely dominant in this match. And I, for one, I very much enjoyed it. Are we going to grab number five here? Dumas, the new boy, plays it off to Le Boss. Back to Dumas again. And now camera... Just playing it all the way back to Goda, just so you can get a touch for today. He's got to earn his getting a touch bonus. Not that anyone gets any bonuses. We're an amateur club. Lovely flick on. Buzrara is in, and that is a 12th goal of the season for him. How many goals has he scored today? Didn't he score his ninth earlier on? How did he score his ninth earlier on? 
And now he's scored two goals and that takes him to 12. Football manager maths is almost as bad as Kev maths is what I'm learning here. Um, we don't need to see the replay of it. But yeah, he's scored twice. I'm sure the first one said it was his ninth of the season. I I don't understand it. I am very bad, very confused about what's going on. Right. Let's go play in the cup against a team from the division above. If we smash them as well, you won't see another match until we play someone really, really good or have a trophy presented to us. Well, here's a thing I wasn't expecting. We've got a Scotland under 21 international in our midst. Roddy Howie is a 15-year-old right back who is in our under-19s. And like I say, he's been called up to the Scotland under-21s. He's got two caps for the under-21s, age 15. He's only showing us four-star potential. I'm a little bit confused. Roddy Howie, born in Scotland, but does speak fluent French, has been here for four years by the looks of it. How has he ended up in the tour you've set up? Aims to be in the current first team in the coming years. I mean, dramatically, that, that will put you in the future first team, not the current first team, Roddy. But, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm being nitpicky there. So, Mon Louis, uh, mid-table in the division above the division that we're in. So, this is, I mean, I, I, firstly... Little bit alarmed to see there's only one promotion once we get up to tier five. That's troublesome. Uh, but it is going to be a nice little yardstick to see how we are. Let's I think we're safe assuming at this point we're getting promoted this season, even though it is still only October. Uh, but this is going to give us a, a little bit of interesting early data to give us an idea of once we get promoted, how's next season going to be, especially with only one. Promotion spot. Weirdly, they swapped their left back and left winger pretty much at kickoff there. Not really sure what that was all about. Our team is unchanged for this game, by the way. We're still playing our little hybrid route one wing play system that we've been messing around all the time. It's basically the system that gets the best out of Big Fat Dennis, who I've just noticed as well has been promoted to be our only team leader on the Dynamics page. So he's, uh, he's something of a, a hero here at Tour already. And we do go 1-0 up fairly early on through a set piece. But we can't read too much into a set piece. We need to we need to be monitoring how the rest of this game goes. If we comfortably outplay them, then we know next year is going to be delightful as well. Or, of course, next year, the financial problems potentially come back again because not only do we become semi-pro once we get promoted, and we'll have also have had a year of spending all of our money on this ridiculous youth setup that we can't afford. And I'm not really sure what the future looks like financially. I think it's a case of trying to race up the leagues before the money absolutely ruins us and sends us back down again. It's pretty much accurately simulating what Tor's problem has been in real life. We know in real life, the last time they were in Tier 5 a couple of years ago, they actually won it, but ended up getting relegated rather than promoted because of their financial mismanagement. And uh, it seems like the club haven't really learned their lesson we're spending far more money than we should at this level, even though we're an amateur club. And despite having an £800,000 balance at the start, we've already spent nearly half of it. It's only October. <laughs> and next year, we're going to start paying salaries. It's going to be fantastic. And the board, I've asked them, and the board will not let me lower the youth level. They won't They won't hear it. No, you're fine, Kev. We're absolutely fine. We'll we'll spend the money. It's fine. Remember the age old French French uh, prophecy. It wasn't a prophecy. It was just a thing that a French guy said about getting relegated and bankrupt and stuff. You remember the quote? It was in the intro. Took ages to research that and get it translated. Right, big fat Dennis plays it forward to Buzrara and now Mwimba on the right hand side plays it into Buzrara and that is a lovely finish. And that is our second goal of the game. And I think what we're learning here is certainly we are better than a mid-table team from the league above, which is a nice situation to be in. Buzrara, as, as I expected at the start of the year, starting to become the star man we thought he would be. It's going to take a lot for him to outshine Big Fat Dennis. Uh, but at the moment, Buzrara is having a very good episode and Dumas seems to be uh, fitting right in in midfield doing exactly what, what we wanted him to do, winning the ball back and stopping teams get past it, get past us, which is exactly what we're hoping for. Big Fat Dennis is in here and he has hit that hard. 
but it comes back off the post and it remains 2 0 as we hit half time and things are going pretty well for us in this game. I was talking about this on stream um, over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Lelujo, um, about the fact that we've entered the French Cup in the third round. That's what we're playing here. Apparently, there are 14 rounds in the French Cup. Uh, so, uh, uh, comparing this, trying to translate this into FA Cup terms, I guess this is like a first qualifying round, even though third round makes you think you're quite far into it already. We're not. <laughs> We're, this is still very early days. Uh, but we are 3-0 up now. Dennis doing good work on the left-hand side. Crosses into... To, uh, and um, I, I really struggle with that guy's name. And Tambani, is that is that how you say it? I'm really hoping that the comment section has been really full of people trying to help me pronounce these names. I feel like managing in Germany and Spain, as we have done in recent years, I think those names are much easier for me to have a little bit of a guess at and get sort of near enough. These French names. Poor blimey, they're hard, aren't they? Oh, I'm making myself look like a silly goose. Right, let's um, let's make a whole bunch of changes again. And what have we got? We've still got another winger, a right back, centre back. Well, let's bring Guaran, Guaran on. And then we'll bring him on on the left hand side. We'll do all five in one go again. Why not? We're winning 3-0. We're going to drop a little bit of praise. Um, I don't know at what point big French teams end up in this competition, but I'd quite like to be able to show you one of them tomorrow. That's my goal now. Get deep enough into the cup so that we can show you us playing against like a second tier team, top top league. Team. Let's have Paris Saint Germain, a showdown with Paris Saint Germain early on. That would be perfect. But I suspect it probably probably isn't going to happen. But we'll look, that's what we'll be hoping for tomorrow: um, a big cup game, and then wrap up the promotion, take the trophy on what that what would that be Friday, and start next week in tier five, ready to start pushing on and becoming a semi-pro team. It's, it, the plan is all coming together. The only thing that's not really working out so far is me finding somewhere to live. So I think we're probably going to need to be job hunting again tomorrow because the one that I've got clearly isn't paying me enough for me to be able to stop living in a tent, which, I mean, it's a nice tent, as you can see, but it is also very, very small. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. Thank you very much for watching.